So in this video, we're going to be talking about assigning RNS configuration to chiral centers. But before we get to that, I just wanted to briefly outline what a chiral center is. So a chiral center is defined as an atom, and in most cases, it's going to be a carbon atom. And this atom has to have four different substituents bonded to it. And a substituent is an atom or a group of atoms. So therefore, a center that's chiral has to have four different atoms or groups of atoms that are bonded to it. So another thing to take into account is that a lone pair does not count as a substituent. So here we have three molecules, and we're going to determine if these molecules have chiral centers. Let's start with these two first. So for this one, so here we have a nitrogen atom, okay? And this nitrogen atom has one, two, three different things bonded to it. So therefore, this nitrogen atom has three different substituents. But it's also got this lone pair. And like I said before, lone pairs do not count as substituents. Therefore, this center is not chiral. This center is achiral. And if we look over here at this bromine atom, again, it's got lone pairs. Lone pairs don't count as substituents, so this, so this atom also cannot be chiral. Let's look at this carbon atom over here. Well, it's got one, two substituents, okay? So it's got, this is one substituent, all this stuff is another substituent, and its other two substituents are two hydrogen atoms. And it's got one, two, three, and four substituents. However, two out of its four substituents are the exact same because these two hydrogen atoms are equivalent. Therefore, this carbon atom does not have four different substituents. Therefore, this carbon atom cannot be a center that's chiral. And let's look at this carbon atom over here. So it's got three hydrogens bonded to it and it's got all this. So its four substituents are this hydrogen, this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and all of this. Now, when we look at this carbon atom, this carbon atom has four substituents, however, three of its substituents are the exact same because these three hydrogen atoms are equivalent, therefore this center also cannot be chiral. This center is achiral. Now let's look at this molecule. Well, let's start with this carbon atom over here. So this carbon atom again, it's got three hydrogen atoms bonded to it. Therefore, we know that it cannot have four different substituents because three of its substituents are the exact same thing. Three of its substituents are hydrogen atoms. Therefore, this center is also not chiral, it is achiral. Let's look at this carbon atom over here. Well, now we have a double bond. What a double bond implies is that you can only have a maximum of three substituents. You cannot have four substituents because carbon likes to have four bonds. So when you have a double bond, here's a single bond, here's a double bond, and the other substituent is going to be a hydrogen atom. So this carbon atom has one, two, and three different substituents. However, this center, this carbon atom, it cannot be a chiral center. It's also an achiral center, also achiral, because it does not have four different substituents. It only has three, and you need four in order for it to be a center that's actually chiral. Let's look at this carbon atom. Again, it's got a double bond, even though it has all different substituents, it only has three different substituents. It does not have four. Therefore, this center also cannot be chiral. And this bromine atom, again, it's got lone pairs, so it cannot be a center that's chiral. And the hydrogen atom is only bonded to one thing, so it obviously also cannot be a center that's chiral. Now let's look at this molecule. Well, here we have a CH3 group. We've got our methyl group. Again, this center cannot be chiral because its hydrogens are all equivalent. Therefore, three of the four substituents of this carbon atom are the exact same. Therefore, this center is achiral. This carbon atom has got two hydrogen atoms and this substituent as well as this substituent. So two of its substituents are the exact same. Therefore, it also cannot be a center that's chiral because once again, you need to have four different atoms or groups of atoms bonded to it. And in this case, two of its atoms, hydrogen atoms, they're the exact same. However, let's look at this carbon atom right here. This carbon atom is bonded to a methyl group, to a CH3 group, the ME means methyl, which is the same thing as CH3. This carbon atom is also bonded to a hydrogen atom, this carbon atom is also bonded to a bromine atom, and this carbon atom is also bonded to all of this. All of this is a CH2-CH3 group. It's an ethyl group that can also be denoted as ET in some textbooks, okay? So therefore, on when we're looking at this carbon atom, 
it's bonded to four different things. It's got four different substituents directly attached to it. Therefore, this center is chiral. And we denote a center that's chiral with an asterisk. And note that a center that's chiral can also be referred to as a stereogenic center or a stereo center, basically. Okay, so those are some alternate names for a center that's chiral. So just keep those terms in mind. So now that we've accomplished this part, let's go over the basics of the priority rules because the priority rules are what we use to actually assign R or S configuration to chiral centers because only chiral centers can be labeled as R or S. If you have an A chiral center, guess what? It cannot be R or S. You can only assign that to centers that are chiral slash stereogenic slash stereo centers because all these three terms mean the same basic thing. So the priority rules basically state that as the atomic number of your substituent increases, its priority also increases. And there are four different types of priorities. There's priority one, two, three, and four. One is the highest priority and four is the lowest priority. Now, another main thing to consider about the priority rules is that you have to look at the point of first difference if it's necessary and we're going to get to this rule in some future examples as well but first let's go over what atomic number is like how can you find atomic number basically so when you look at the periodic table you have your element i just labeled it with an arbitrary x and there are two numbers there's one on top and there's one below the element symbol the number below is the atomic mass which we don't care about while the number above is the atomic number that's what we care about so if it's carbon, the number above it is 6, therefore carbon has an atomic number of 6. If it's a hydrogen atom, if you have an H over here, the number above the H is going to be 1, therefore hydrogen has an atomic number of 1. Okay, so you basically assign your priorities 1, 2, 3, and 4 to your four different substituents, and once that's done, you have to point the thumb of your right hand in the direction of substituent 4. Again, substituent 4 is the substituent with the lowest priority. Now, the thing about the substituent with the lowest priority is that it's either going to be pointing into or out of the page. If it's pointing into the page, it's going to have it's going to be attached to a dashed line like so. If it's pointing out of the page, it's going to be attached to a solid black wedge kind of like this. Okay? So, Priority 4 is not going to really be on the plane of the page, which is denoted as, you know, just a normal line. It's going to be either pointing into or out of the page. Okay, so you do that with your right thumb because when you do the priority rules, you have to use your right hand, which is also known as the right hand rule in this case. Okay, so once you point your finger, once you point the thumb of your right hand either into or out of the page, then you point your other fingers of your right hand in the direction of substituent one, which is the substituent with the highest priority. So let's say my lowest priority substituent was pointing into the page, so I'm pointing my right thumb into the page. I curl my fingers in the direction of substituent one, okay, which will make more sense when I get to some concrete examples, and then you curl your fingers, okay? So when you curl your fingers, you know the pattern, you try to notice the pattern of one, two, and three. Once you point your thumb in the direction of substituent four, Forget about four. Four is not important. Just disregard it and only focus on one, two, and three. When you curl your fingers, you notice the pattern in which your fingers are curling. And you also know the pattern of one, two, and three. If you're going in the natural order of counting, if you, uh, if you curl your fingers and your fingers are curling from one to two to three, then that's the natural order of counting. And therefore, your chiral center can be labeled as R. However, if when you curl your fingers, one, two, and three are not in the natural order of counting. So an example of this is when you curl your fingers, you go from one to three to two. This is not the natural order of counting. Therefore, your chiral center is going to be S. Okay, so these are the basic rules of assigning RNS chirality. And now we can go over a couple of examples. So first, I've got this huge molecule over here. And for your reference, I've listed the atomic number of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and bromine. So first, we have to identify all of our chiral centers. Well, this is a CH3 group. We know that it cannot be a chiral center. It's a center that's achiral. It cannot be a center that's chiral because it's got three hydrogen atoms bonded to it. 
and these substituents, these three substituents are the exact same. You can make a similar case over here because two out of the four substituents of this carbon atom are the exact same. We've got a double bond here, a double bond here, therefore we cannot have chiral centers here. And for this oxygen atom, it's got lone pairs, Therefore, and since lone pairs do not count as substituents, therefore this cannot be a center that's chiral. Again, here we have a CH2 group, we cannot have a center that's chiral. And here we have a bromine atom, a bromine atom has lone pairs over here, so therefore this center also cannot be chiral. It's also going to be achiral. Notice that I skipped one atom, it's this carbon atom over here. And this carbon atom is actually a center that's chiral. You can assign R or S configuration to the center because this carbon atom has four different things bonded to it. It's got this methyl group, it's got this hydrogen atom, it's got all of this, and it's got all of this. And these four substituents are all different. So now we know that this center is chiral, we mark it with an asterisk. And our next step is to assign R or S. And in order to assign R or S, what we basically have to do is assign R priorities from 1 to 4, just like I explained previously. So what you basically do is you start with your central carbon atom that's chiral. Now we go one atom away from this chiral center. I'm going one atom away. One atom away, we have a carbon atom over here for the substituent. For this substituent, you go one atom away, you have a hydrogen atom. For this substituent, we go one atom away, you have a carbon atom. For this substituent, you go one atom away, you have an oxygen atom. Now, when you go one atom away, in most cases, you can assign priorities one and four. You worry about two and three later. First worry about assigning the highest and lowest priorities. Because if you do that wrong, then everything else falls apart. Okay? So, what is our lowest priority group in this case? It's going to be the hydrogen atom. Because when you go one atom away, over here, you run into hydrogen. Hydrogen has the lowest possible atomic number of one, so therefore this substituent is going to have the lowest priority number, the lowest priority, which is four. Now, when you go one atom away over here, you run into oxygen, and here we run into carbon and carbon. Oxygen has a higher priority than carbon, because oxygen has a higher atomic number than carbon, and it's also going to have a higher atomic number than hydrogen, so you know that this substituent that contains oxygen one atom away from your chiral center, it's going to have higher priorities than all of these three substituents. Therefore, we can assign it with the priority of one, the highest possible priority. So now we have to worry about assigning priorities two and three. So we went one atom away. We ran into carbon here, we ran into carbon here. Now, this is where point of first difference is extremely important. This carbon atom is bonded to three hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen atoms have an atomic number of one. They have a, the lowest possible atomic number. Let's look at this carbon. This carbon is also bonded to a hydrogen atom that has an atomic number of one, but it's also bonded to another carbon atom. And this other carbon atom also has an atomic number of six. Here's where our point of first difference is so important. The point of first difference is a carbon over here versus a hydrogen over here. Since carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen, this substituent has a higher priority than this substituent because the carbon here is bonded to one hydrogen and one carbon while this substituent over here this carbon it's only bonded to hydrogens only it's not going to be bonded to another carbon since this carbon over here is bonded to another carbon and since carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen this substituent is going to win out it's going to have the higher priority which implies that this substituent over here all of this has a priority of two while this substituent has a priority of three so now we've assigned priorities one through four and now we point our thumb in the direction of the lowest priority substituent which is going to be our hydrogen atom and in this case our hydrogen atom is going to be pointing into the page so now we stick our our sum, we point it into the page, into the page, into a pa into the page. Okay. Now we curl. Now we point our fingers in the direction of priority of the substituent one, which is the highest priority. So I have my right sum into the page, and then I'm curling. I'm pointing my fingers in the direction of one as much as I can, which I've done right here. And now you curl your fingers. It just curls them like so. So as I curl my fingers, I notice that I go from one to three to two, one to three to two. Again, once you've pointed your right sum in the direction of prior, of group four, forget about four. You've already done You've already listened to four, forget about four, four is no longer important. Once you've pointed your thumb 
Now you only worry about one, two, and three. So as I'm curling my fingers, I'm curling from one to three to two. One to three to two, I'm ignoring four now because I've already dealt with four by using my thumb, which I've pointed into the page in this case. So I'm going from one to three to two, one to three to two. This is not the natural order of counting. Therefore, since this is not the natural order of counting, based on what I said on the previous page, it's not the natural order of counting. Therefore, we assign our chiral center with the S configuration, okay? So let's go to another example. So for this case, let's look at this carbon atom. This carbon atom is bonded to three of the same substituents, okay? And it's got a different substituent. It's got all this, but three of its four substituents are the same. They are three equivalent fluorine atoms. Therefore, this center is a chiral. It cannot be chiral. Let's look at this carbon atom. It's bonded to a hydrogen atom. It's bonded to an OH, a hydroxy group. It's bonded to all of this, and it's bonded to all of this. These are four different substituents. There are four different atoms or groups of atoms. Therefore, this center is chiral. It's a stereogenic carbon. It is a stereo center. Let's look at this carbon atom. It's bonded to, to two hydrogen atoms. These two substituents are the same. Therefore, this center is a chiral. You make the same case over here. You've got a methyl group. Three of its four substituents of this carbon are equivalent because we've got three equivalent hydrogens. Therefore, this center is also a chiral. So now let's go to this chiral center. We've only got one chiral center in this example, just like the previous example. So now we have to assign priorities one through four. Again, hydrogen has the lowest atomic number possible, so it's going to have the lowest priority in this case, which is four. Now let's go one atom away. So one atom away from the chiral center, we run into carbon, we run into carbon, we run into oxygen. Oxygen has a higher atomic number than carbon, therefore this is going to have a higher priority than these substituents and this one also because oxygen also has a higher atomic number than hydrogen. So therefore this substituent has the highest priority because it's got the highest atomic number of 8 in this case, so it's going to have priority of 1. So now we have to assign priorities 2 and 3. So I've gone one carbon over, I have a carbon atom here, and I've also gone one carbon over and I have a carbon atom here. Now again the point of first difference is extremely important important. This carbon atom is bonded to another carbon atom and it's also bonded to two hydrogen atoms. However, this carbon is bonded to three fluorine atoms. Let's look at fluorine. Fluorine has an atomic number of nine. Fluorine therefore has a higher atomic number than carbon and hydrogen. Therefore, based on the rule of first difference, this substituent has a higher priority than this substituent because when you look at these two carbons, this carbon is bonded to a fluorine atom and the fluorine atom has a higher atomic number than carbon and hydrogen, which is important when you consider the fact that this carbon atom, it's bonded to atoms that have lower atomic numbers than fluorine because here we have a carbon atom that's bonded to this atom. Carbon has a lower atomic number than fluorine and this carbon atom is also bonded to hydrogen, and hydrogen has a lower atomic number than fluorine as well. So therefore, this substituent is gonna have a lower priority than this substituent. So since this, is, so since this has priority one, this has priority four, this substituent has priority two, while this substituent over here has priority three. Now we point our thumb in the direction of the lowest priority substituent, which is hydrogen, priority four. This, in this case, hydrogen is pointing out of the page, so we stick our thumb out. And now I point my fingers in the direction of priority one, which is like so, and now I curl my fingers. I curl them. I go from one to two to three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I go from one to two to three. One, two, three to three. One, two, three to three. Again, I'm ignoring four because I only use four when I determine what direction I point my right thumb in. So I go from one to so I go from one to two to three, one to two to three. This is the natural order of counting. Therefore, since we do have the natural order of counting, this chiral center is going to be R.